It is finally here. Ben 10 Ultimate Alien, the follow-up series to Ben 10 Alien Force where Ben wields the Ulta Matrix, an Omnitrix that allows Ben's aliens to go ultimate, changing their appearance and giving them new powers. There were also a ton of new aliens and an expansion to the universe of Ben 10, or at least an expansion on our knowledge of the universe. Now, I'm trying my best to make Ultimate Alien sound a lot more expansive, but this show is basically Alien Force 2. Not like that's a bad thing, Alien Force is great, in my opinion. But anyways, despite that, Ultimate Alien is actually where my viewings for Ben 10 stopped when I was younger. That's right, despite all of my current Ben 10 videos, I had not watched all of Ben 10 before this review. I think the reason I stopped watching Ben 10 here was because I thought that the idea of Ultimate Aliens was dumb for some reason. However, going through the show for this review, I ended up enjoying Ultimate Alien quite a bit. But we're here to talk about video games, and you guys have asked immensely for this one specifically. In fact, it's my most requested review to date, and given all of the support for all of my previous Ben 10 videos, I can't entirely say I'm surprised. And according to a good amount of people that's commented on my videos, they've said that this Ben 10 game is the best of them all. My favorite at the current moment is Vogax Attacks, and honestly, it's gonna take a lot for this one to top it for me. Plus, I still have a racing game, two Omniverse games, and a reboot game to review as well. Um, actually, past me who wrote this prior to this announcement, but uh, another reboot game got announced, so I'll make that two reboot games. Also, for the very small percentage of you wondering about the Rise of Hex, that literally will never be able to happen because it's a digital-only game that was taken down about four years ago, and I do not have it. So unless someone was willing to help me out in getting that, wink wink, nudge nudge, shove shove, that'll never happen. But all of that is for the future. Today, with me being halfway through the Ben 10 games now, I'll be looking at Ben 10 Ultimate Alien Cosmic Destruction to see if it can truly take the title as the best Ben 10 video game. Ben is alerted by his number one fan Jimmy about an incoming cosmic storm that is heading towards Earth because everything attacks Earth in fiction. Ben sends plumbers to deal with it before they get wiped off the face of the universe. During all of this, Ben is stopping bounty hunters from stealing some artifacts. He, Gwen, and Kevin then find out that the plumbers that were sent got washed and need to deal with the storm. Asmuth shows up, saying that sending more plumbers to their doom won't do anything. He instead suggests temporarily powering up the Ultimatrix by finding the artifacts which are apparently pieces of the POTUS Altiari, a device made eons ago by the Galvin, which was sent to Earth to prevent evil use. Which, can I just say that the Galvin should stop sending things to Earth? You Galvin sure are obsessed with sending your top tech to Earth. Kevin! What? I can't be the only one thinking it. My thoughts exactly, Kevin. The only Galvin technology on Earth that ends up going right is the Omnitrix, and even that is kinda pushing it, since the watch wasn't even meant for Ben. But I'm being annoying, let's move on. Upon arrival to Earth, the Potus Altiari was broken apart, and each piece fell to a different place on the planet, affecting the areas they landed in, which helps in identifying most of the pieces' locations. They also realize that the storm is being made by a Tokustar, a way big for those that don't know the alien names, who's being assisted by Siphon. By the way, for those saying that I'm pronouncing Tokustar wrong, that's because it's been pronounced three separate ways throughout Ben 10. So for the sake of cosmic destruction, we will call it Tokustar. Now, Ben and the others must go around the world, defeat multiple villains, and fight all of the Potus Altiari parts to defeat the Toku Star, or else cosmic destruction will ensue. And yes, that is a pun. Feel free to unsubscribe, but don't actually do that, please. This game has the same sense of a storyline as Vogax Attacks and caters to a lot of fan service with the villains involved, even so much as to have Riddle Brother clones in at some point. Also, there's that guy on the moon that makes an appearance. But there are some possible slightish continuity differences, maybe? Which is funny since the developers stated that they tried to have this game's story as close in continuity to the actual show, as well as what is believably possible from Ben 10. Coming from the TV show as a writer, Cartoon Network's put a lot of faith in me to stay true to the brand and to really you know, stay true to the character voices and keep the games, if not entirely 100% in continuity with the show, as close as we can possibly be for the fans to accept it and enjoy it. Yeah, the video games are like additional alternate adventures, as are the books, as are the comic books. It's not, if it's not in the TV show, it's not really canon, but um, we do try to keep it as close to things that would be possible within the TV show. 
However, they did also say that this isn't canon, so I guess that doesn't matter much, but this is something that is still important to bring up. The major thing is the evil Tokustar because this game is not the origin of that idea. It's actually Ben 10 Destroy All Aliens, where Azmuth was turned into a Tokustar. But here, we find out later that it's Albedo that has obtained the form after the Omnitrix was broken. And the Ben series does have a huge thing with multiple dimensions and timelines, so it's in the realm of possibility and technically is as close to the continuity as possible, just by other dimensions and timelines existing. That and other Ben 10 games and movies also have different timelines, so great job by the writers, which is to be expected since one of the main writers of the show was also on the game. I now have an Xbox 360, so the game doesn't look blurry like last time. It feels great though it doesn't matter too much because this game is also on PS3. But there is a reason for me getting the Xbox 360 version that I'll talk about later. Anyone who has seen my previous Ben 10 videos can imagine what I'm gonna talk about. But anyways, graphically, this game is a somewhat mixed bag for me. Aliens, robots, environments, and everything else looks perfectly fine. Except humans. They look a bit more glossy than they should be. Now, a really big positive in this game that I almost never get to talk about is Ragdoll physics. When enemies die, they sometimes have ragdoll physics, and it looks fantastic. I wish more games had ragdoll physics nowadays because they can be some of the funniest moments in a game, and that's especially the case here. Enemies flying 10 feet after headbutting them or folding into themselves is incredibly satisfying and beyond hilarious. For the music, Ultimate Aliens theme is in the game, which in my opinion is the worst theme for Ben 10, period, but that's besides the point. In game, most tracks are about 30 second loops, which is a bit annoying, but thankfully, all of these 30 second loops are really good. A good amount of it sounds like it would be from the show, and there's a lot of rock in it too. The Ultimate Combat songs are so good. Those are my favorite tracks in the game. And if I'm being honest, this game might have just taken the top spot for Ben 10 game soundtracks for me. Like seriously, like this game or not, the music is one of the best parts of it. And that's saying a lot, considering that my favorite soundtrack from before was Protector of Earth. That has held its place for a good while. The voice work in terms of actor's choice and attention to detail is astounding. Every single character in this game has the same voice actor as they do in the show. Every single one. Even characters with barely any lines like Jimmy's mother and characters that haven't been in Ben since the original series have their voice actors reprise their roles. Like, they didn't have to do that, but they did, and it's very well appreciated. Speaking of unnecessary, in a level that takes place in Japan, the people actually speak Japanese. Arigato. Domo arigato. Sure, it's a few generic lines, but again, it wasn't needed, but it's greatly appreciated. It's not very often where you get details like this accounted for. Then again, not that many license-based games end up going around the entire world, so there's that too. I remember in my Vilgax Attacks video, I said that I didn't have to try and revise a script that I already used in my other two Ben 10 videos prior. As I mentioned before, a lot of things are different about this game compared to the last two, so thankfully my entire script won't be a similar copy again. Well, I'm gonna have to do that with this video since it's similar to Vilgax Attacks. You can play as Ben and turn into some aliens that have already made a game appearance, like Swampfire, Big Chill, and Echo Echo, as well as some aliens with first-time game appearances, such as Terraspin, Armadrillo, and Water Hazard. Utilizing these aliens' powers will allow you to battle enemies and maneuver around levels. Just like Vilgax Attacks, you can switch between Ben and his alien forms whenever you want, and you don't have to worry about going out of these forms due to a gauge. Ben and his alien forms have one standard combo. However, there is also a counterattack activated similarly to the Batman games. Every alien has four special moves, one of them usually being a projectile, one that hits around them, and two that are big hitting attacks. While each of them can be used for combat, they all have other purposes and levels. Now, since I'm redoing things anyways, let's look over the old aliens first. Swampfire can throw fire, obviously, which can explode gas canisters with exposed fumes and burn away branches to open up passageways. Big Chill shoots ice and is able to glide far distances. Doing so over air currents will push him upwards. Echo Echo has the ability to duplicate himself. These clones fight with him as well as work on switches and pressure plates that require multiple people. 
Humongosaur can break down walls with cracks in them, push and pull large objects, and use giant cranks and levers. Spider Monkey is able to pull levers that are out of reach and swing across gaps with webbing. Now it's time for the new aliens. Terraspin can hover for a short period of time and launch himself off of ramps using wind. Water Hazard is able to shoot water. I wish I could make that sound more interesting, but that's really it. It's about as interesting as Swamp Fire can shoot fire. Amphibian can use electricity to power up generators. NRG shoots a laser to melt metal structures and doesn't take damage from areas that are on fire or covered in radiation. Armadrillo can use his drill arm to turn machines within the ground, causing objects to move. Some segments of the game have one of five aliens go ultimate, basically any of the older aliens that I mentioned before. During these you have a lot more health and strength, as well as different special moves that don't require any meter to use. From time to time you will see quick time events which sometimes have multiple options. DNA points can be collected by breaking objects, fighting enemies, and finding any of three sumo slammer cards that are hidden around levels. The DNA points are used for two different types of upgrades, one of them being stats, those being strength, defense, and speed, and the other is the power and range of each special move. These upgrades can be done during a level at any time or during the pre-mission screen. When a new enemy appears, you are shown a stat chart revealing their strengths and weaknesses. The amount of environmental use for each alien's powers is just as much as it is in Vilgast attacks, if not more so. You'll use all of the alien's special traits and abilities constantly throughout the game and in combination with each other, which as I explained in the last Ben 10 video, is something that I will always like to see. Thinking out each alien's powers and using things like their size to their advantage is great. The ultimate alien segments are stupidly busted in a funny way, especially Echo Echo, which can annihilate everything in a single move. You basically have to do nothing to lose during these because you take so little damage and one-shot any normal enemy. Like seriously, I unintentionally tested this out. Something else that is really cool is the quick time event. At first, I thought that it would test your knowledge on the aliens for which one would be useful in a situation, but it turns out that literally any of the ones shown can be used. Now, that does sound bad, but at the same time, that does show how multiple aliens can be used in the same situation, which is pretty true. And it's just up to you for which one you'd rather see. Plus, some animations are really cool. And something that makes all of this even more interesting is that in the making the game video that is in the extras of the game, it's a really good video by the way, try and watch it, but the developers were making this game while the show was developing, and sometimes they apparently didn't know what some aliens did? Because Ultimate Alien the show is new, we were kind of co-developing the game at the same time they were developing the show. So we ran into instances where some of the new form, the new alien forms, we didn't know exactly what they did. In our example, there's Amphibian who's in the game. He went through several, several uh, color designs um, and patterns even and textures that we had to redo because the studio was trying to find his, you know, the right look for him for the show. So, good communication between everyone on the team because that sounds like a nightmare to deal with. Countering actually has a purpose in this game because it not only deals with normal enemies in general, but there are also some enemies specifically designed to either use counters first to deal with them or use your special meter to deal with them without countering. Also counters can lead to some funny ragdolls, so that's a plus. Then you might think that since the counters can be done by Ben as well, isn't it busted to just stay as Ben? Well I thought about that too, but I had a realization. You can't upgrade Ben. <laughs> The upgrades do make a difference when it comes to beating enemies. I will admit I have no idea what the speed stat does since that doesn't make the aliens faster, so maybe it increases how much meter you get back? I don't know. You guys can let me know in the comments for anyone that knows, but the other stats and upgrades are fine. By the way, this might be really simple, but save points are a thing in this game. Levels being really long was something I had an issue with in Alien Force, but now with save points, that's not a problem. And good thing I had them, because, well... I just want you to keep this in mind. This issue might just be in the Xbox version of the game, but it's still enough of a problem to bring up. This game crashes and softlocks way too much. Normally something like this would just be in the ugly section since I've only played this version, and it usually doesn't happen very often or enough for me to actually make a point on it. But not this time. 
It actually happens too often in too many scenarios. I have crashed slash softlocked the game, fighting a boss, beating a boss, going into a cutscene, and switching aliens in the new Ultimatrix screen. There's no reason for the game to crash through basic means that I'll be doing often throughout the game multiple times. No version of the game should have this many crash problems, especially with an aspect that I'll bring up in a little bit. It is a very good thing that save points are in this game, because otherwise, getting through this game would be way more irritating. They are basically this game's saving grace. Get it? Haha. -ha. Laugh. Only being able to have four aliens out at one time is odd. Every other game so far has given you the ability to switch between every playable alien instantly on the fly, with slight exceptions to meter going down. Even Vilgas Attacks, which had 10 aliens, was perfectly fine, but here you can only have four of them out at once. Why the change? Well, in the pre-mission screens you are given four aliens, three mandatory ones and an optional one. The mandatory ones are the ones that have the level design centered around them for that level. However, some things for the mandatory ones can be done by multiple aliens. Any alien with a double jump is able to grab on the ledges. Water Hazard and Big Chill can both put out fires. Echo Echo and Spider Monkey can go into vents because they are both small enough. At this point, you might as well just have all 10 aliens available. The developers also said that they wanted rapid switching between the aliens for making combos between aliens and their moves. The, the fighting system definitely supports with our quick alien switch uh, feature. You can fight, you can start a fight with Swamp Fire, and as I hop, hop to another one, I can switch to Big Chill, defeat him, you know, backflip into another one while switching into Spider Monkey, you know, and conquering this guy and then finishing off with Humongosaur mid, you know, mid jump and to, to kind of polarize him into the ground. And while that is something that you're able to do, an alternative that would have made the rather slow changing more streamlined across multiple aliens is to have all aliens on a dial and time slows down while the dial is on screen. The way it's done here just feels like a middleman roundabout to something that wasn't a problem before. And finally, anyone who has seen my previous videos have been waiting for me to mention alien exclusivity. It wouldn't be a Ben 10 video of mine if I didn't bring it up. Thankfully, the only difference is through the use of cheat codes on the Xbox and PlayStation versions. Since I played the Xbox version of this, I was able to play as Rap, because the PlayStation version has forearms and I did not feel like playing as forearms again. I kind of feel like there could have just been two different cheat codes and have them in both versions, especially with the potential crash issues being an Xbox exclusive thing. I'm not exactly fond of potentially choosing a worse version for an alien that I'd rather have. Thankfully, it's just cheat codes and not base game characters. I think that's the kindest I've ever been about alien exclusivity before. Who knows if the next games are going to be like that though. So, is this game the best Ben 10 game at least as far as right now is concerned? I'd say yes, for the most part, but it does depend on the version. Probably. The gameplay is very similar to Vilgax Attacks, which to me had the best gameplay and plays to its strengths, with a few changes that are kinda unneeded. The graphics and music is the best the series has had so far, with a few exceptions, but the decent amount of crashes can hold the game down a bit if it happens a lot on whatever version you play on. Thankfully, save points help with this a lot, and again, there could easily be some other factors around it, but I still experienced it enough to warrant some criticism in this video. However, this game does live up to the hype that many upon many of you have been telling me, and I shall dub this as the best Ben 10 video game. Unless the future tells me otherwise, because I still have way too many Ben 10 games to do. What's going on my fellow residents, it's me to Frozen Cavern, and thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. The wait is finally over for Ben 10 Cosmic Destruction. Now, as I stated multiple times in the video, that does not mean that the Ben 10 reviews are going away. No, they are not. There's still plenty of Ben 10 games that I have not gotten to yet, and of course, I've got to at some point. But again, when it comes to the Ben 10 videos, thank you guys for all of the support that you guys have given me, because basically all of my Ben 10 videos are like the best ones on my channel in terms of views, and at this current moment, Protector of Earth is getting close to 10,000 views, which, my goodness, <laughs> and I have a feeling I mentioned this in other Ben 10 videos, but uh, it's the only video I'm sick in, so I'm kind of upset that it's the only one that's done that well. 
But regardless, it does genuinely mean a lot to me that you guys are loving the Ben 10 videos as much as you guys are. And I hope that every other Ben 10 video that I end up doing for you guys meets up to your expectations just like the other ones have. And I'm not entirely sure if I have mentioned this yet, but thank you guys as well for 2,000 subscribers. I know that happened about a month ago now, but still, it does mean a lot, especially because of the Ben 10 videos. Those have done the best on the channel, so it also makes sense for those to be the ones where I get the most subscribers from. So for everyone that has subscribed from those videos, thank you so much. But if you guys have not already, make sure you go down into the description below because that's where all of my social media is located. My Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Discord are all in the description, and they are all ways for you guys to be informed on whatever videos I have out. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, as well as share this with your friends and family. But until the next video, take care.